And so the woman assumes the headship. And anytime the woman assumes the headship, there is problem. Why is there a problem? Because the man begins to say, you are controlling. The man begins to say, you are not submissive. But you got to understand that because you are not playing your role as the head of the family and as the leader of the family and there is no direction in the marriage, that is why the woman has assumed your position. And anytime the woman assume the headship and the leadership position, there will always be trouble because that is not how marriage was instituted. Amen. Let's pray. And so this is part, part three of be careful who you marry. Be careful who you marry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will use me this morning to bless your people and to empower your people. And Holy Spirit, I submit to you that you will use me as a blessing to your people in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. I want you to look at somebody and tell the person, be careful who you marry. Oh, tell them eyeball to eyeball, shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> now, if you, are, if you are sitting with your husband or your wife, tell them, were you careful when you married me? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Were you careful when you married me? <laughs> Amen. Uh, like I have said, um, I said last week that it is important who you get married to because uh, who you marry can either make you or break you. Who you marry can either lift you or bring you down. Who you marry can either make you excel in your endeavors or retrogress. Who you marry can either let your life live long or your life is cut off. And I believe I expounded on that last week. If The shortest way to die quick is to marry the wrong person. Is to marry the wrong person. That is the shortest way to die quick. And I also told you that there is nothing worse. There is nothing worse than being single like marrying the wrong person. It's better you are single than to get yourself entangled with the wrong person it will ruin your life it will change your life it will metamorphose your life your life will come to a standstill and it will come to a halt if you get yourself entangled with the wrong person you don't get married because of desperation because desperation will lead you to the wrong man or to the wrong woman and I've also said that you don't get married because you are being pressured or your colleagues and your contemporaries are getting married and because of that, you too, you want to marry. You don't get married because you want to prove a point that you too, you can marry. Because there are some people who are married today, not because they really want to marry, but because they want to prove a point to somebody that if I want to marry, I can marry today. And they realize that it is not about if I want to marry, I can marry today. There is more to marriage than the fantasies that we have. There is more to marriage than the romantic novels that we read. There is more to marriage than the romantic movies that we watch. Marriage is reality. It's no dream reality reality that is why i said it can either make you or, or make you now today like i said i want to focus on the men yesterday i expounded a lot 
on the women. I want you to turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, the verse number 23. Ephesians chapter 5, the verse number 23. Ephesians 5, the verse number 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. For the husband is the head of the wife. Somebody say head. Somebody say head. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. The husband is the head. The husband is the head. Which means that women, you cannot marry a man who cannot be a head. You know, many years ago, more especially during Christmas, back where I am coming from, the chickens are always in trouble. And oftentimes, uh, my younger brother is the one that kills the chicken because I don't have the liver <laughs> to cut off the neck. It's just true till today. I, I, I don't have the nerve and the liver to kill a chicken. My heart can't handle it. So it's my younger brother who kills the chicken. I remember one time uh, he told my mom, today, let my brother <laughs> kill the chicken because he makes me feel like I'm a murderer. <laughs> and you won't believe it. They gave me the chicken. I did everything under the sun. I couldn't cut off the head of the chicken. I just couldn't. You have to do it. But there was something I realized. Oftentimes, when they chop off the head of the chicken, uh, you will see the chicken tossing through and flow all over the place without any form of direction. And then at the end, the chicken dies. I want you to hear me very carefully. When you marry a man who doesn't have the head to be the head of the relationship and of the marriage, what happens is this. The marriage and the relationship has no direction. And pretty soon, the relationship will die. It will crash pretty soon. That is why, women, you cannot marry just any man because the man wears suit and wears pants. One of the things you are looking at as it relates to the man you want to marry is the quality of leadership. Can the man lead you? Can the man give direction to the family? Husbands are the head of the family. The head of the family. In other words, the man brings leadership into the family. Not just leadership, but righteous leadership. I, I, have to, I have to emphasize on that. Not just leadership, but righteous leadership. Now, to just give you a backdrop of what I'm talking about or what I'm about to say, I realize in scripture, especially looking at the history of the children of the Israelites, any time a king is a righteous leader and obliged to the principles of the word, the people prosper and excel and they are happy. 
when a rebellious king sits on the throne, when a destructive king sits on the throne, you realize that the people that he is ruling, they suffer. Throughout scripture, anytime the children of the Israelites prosper and excel, it is because of the rulership, it is because of the head, it is because of the leadership, it is because of the king. As long as the king is righteous and leading the people righteously and obliging to the principles of God's word, the people under him will prosper and excel and there will always be peace. But where there is a rebellious king, a disobedient king that has no headship and leadership, over the people, the people suffer. So I'm about to make a dangerous statement. The man is a reflection of the woman. I want to say that again. The man is the reflection of the woman. What do I mean by that? This is what I mean. Whatever you are receiving, men, from the woman is you. I want to say that again. Whatever you are receiving from your spouse, it is your reflection. You cannot get out what you didn't put in. You cannot make a withdrawal when you have not made a deposit your withdrawal is determined by your deposit if you don't have a deposit and you try to make a withdrawal the atm machine will tell you insufficient funds the reason is because you have not put anything into your account so i have come to realize that the reflection or the behavior, the mannerism, the attitude of the woman towards the man is the reflection of the man. What do I mean? I will give you a couple of examples. The first example I gave you concerning the kings and the children of the Israelites. Do you realize that when the king is rebellious, the people become rebellious? reflection when the king is righteous the people become righteous looking from the time of king saul king solomon david and all the other kings anytime the king is obedient and righteous and walk according to the ways of god automatically the people become righteous and they walk according to the ways of God. Why? The people are the reflection of the king. What he puts in, that is what he is getting. Anytime the king is rebellious and disobedient, the people become rebellious and disobedient and they go wayward and they begin to worship other gods. They are worshiping other gods because the king, the leader, is worshiping other gods, the reflection of the king. So let me give you an example. A man goes to work and comes back. And then when he returns, the wife is at the kitchen cooking and at the same time cleaning because, you know, women can do so many things at the same time and everything will be going perfectly but men will not dare try that why a woman can be cooking cooking at the same time watching tv at the same time taking care of the children and everything is in order and everything is intact if the man 
is cooking and watching TV, rest assured that that food is going to be burnt into ashes. A woman can be cooking, watching TV, taking care of children. The phone will be ringing. She will pick the phone and be on the phone and everything will be smooth. Everything will be in order. Everything will be going well. But a man will be cooking and the phone is ringing and he is not hearing. Because we can only focus on one thing at a time because we think with one side of our brain. Whilst women think with two sides of their brain. Like I said last week, that is why I often say that men lies a lot. And the reason is because when we say something, after you don't need to wait for a week, just wait for an hour, especially when we lie, just wait for an hour and ask the story will be different. The reason is because we have forgotten what we just said. Now, it doesn't mean that women don't lie. Women lie, but listen, when a woman tells you something, I said the same thing, two years, she will repeat the same thing to you because they think with two sides of their brain. That is what makes men liars and makes women I didn't say it. I don't want any letter. I didn't say it. You said it. And so, like I was saying, men are reflection. Women are reflection of the of the women. And the reason is because, like I was saying, you have come back from work. You are sitting down, your wife is working. Instead of you helping her out, your wife asks you, um, honey, can you help me? I am very tired, I need some rest. I want to say, it. I will say it again. I am very tired, I need some rest. Whilst you, the man, you are looking at her and you are, you are seeing that she is doing so many things at the same time, he's, she's overwhelmed and she's asking for help. But because of our selfishness and self-centeredness, we decide to respond this way. I just came back from work. I am tired. I want to rest. So here the reflection. So now in the bedroom, you wanted Come on now. an affection <laughs> in the bedroom. You wanted some response in the bedroom. You wanted some touches. And guess what happens? She responds this way. I am tired. I just finished taking care of all these things. I am tired. You see, a reflection. What you just put in, that is what you just got. I like that, Pastor. And so, and so, when you see the woman behaving a certain way towards the man, please don't be talking about the attitude and the mannerism and the behavior of the woman begin to check yourself begin to examine yourself what am i doing wrong what am i not doing right what am i supposed to be doing that i am not doing and so you are a complete reflection of your husband. So, men, you cannot complain too much about your wife. The way she talks to you, her behavior towards you, her attitude towards you. Because if you are truly the head, and you are a righteous leader, then your wife should reflect who you are. But oftentimes, 
the woman now becomes the head because the man is not playing the leadership role that he is supposed to be playing and so the woman assumes the headship and anytime the woman assumes the headship there is problem why is there a problem because the man begins to say you are controlling the man begins to say you are not submissive but you got to understand that because you are not playing your role as the head of the family and as the leader of the family and there is no direction in the marriage that is why the woman has assumed your position and anytime the woman assume the headship and the leadership position there will always be trouble because that is not how marriage was instituted and as a result of that, that relationship and marriage is not going to work. And today, we have so many men that are not leaders in their family. We have so many men that are not taking the responsibility of headship in the family, in the relationship, and in the marriage. Oftentimes, when you see a young man with tattoos all over the body and you see spike hairs and and piercing all over the body oftentimes is the reflection of the man the dad the anger the absence of the man or the apostates of the function of the man it's either the man is absent or the man is not playing the role that he's supposed to be playing in the family. And oftentimes it affects the children. We'll come to that. It affects the children. And the children begin to reflect the anger, the animosity, the, the bitterness, as well as the wives, the women. Listen, when men take their leadership role, when men play their headship role, let me tell you, the woman that you want, the wife that you want your wife to be, she will be if you play your role very well. But oftentimes, we don't play our role very well. What do I mean by that? If we are the head, we are not just head over sex. We are not just head over the body of the woman. We are head and leader of every area. It means spiritual, emotional, uh, psychological, financial, and everything else that I will be touching on shortly. It means that the woman shouldn't be waking the man up. It's time to pray. The woman shouldn't be telling the man, we have to go to church. The woman shouldn't be telling the man, we need to have a devotion. You as a man and as the leader of the family, it is your responsibility. You should be telling the woman, it's time for us to pray. Honey, get us, let's pray. Honey, it's time for us to have devotion. Honey, we have to deal with this thing in prayer. We need to fast. We need to wait on the Lord. We need to hear the voice of God, what God is saying concerning this project, concerning this mission, and concerning this thing that is happening in the family. But oftentimes, the men are absent when it comes to that role. And it is the women that handles that. Anytime that happens, believe you me, as a man, the respect that you want from your woman, you will never have it because you are not playing your role as a leader. The man is always angry, throwing stuff, screaming, shouting at the woman. And if they are children, the children are there and they are seeing it. What kind of a leader are you? What kind of hardship? 
are you? Today, about 70% of the marriages that we have and the relationships that we have, it is the women that encourages the men to pray. It is the women that encourages the men to pray. It is the women that encourages the men to go to church. 70%. That is a staggering statistics. And oftentimes, we expect so much from our women when we have not given so much. For you to expect so much, you must give so much. And do you know the reason why? Let me show you a scripture. Let's go to Ephesians 5, the verse number 25. Ephesians 5. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Do you know that the reason why we are in love with Christ and the reason why we serve him, it is not necessarily because we are commanded to or we are compelled to or we are forced to worship him and to receive him as our Lord and Savior. The reason why we accept him as our Lord and Savior and we love him so much is because of his sacrifice on the cross. I want you to say that with me. Sacrifice. sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. sacrifice. Now, and so if we men are supposed to love our wives like Christ loved the church, it means that men must learn how to sacrifice. We must be a sacrificing agent. We must be a sacrificing agent so that we don't force our wives to submit or to love us. But in sacrificing, they will love us without us asking for it. They will submit without us commanding for it. As men, we are providers of the family. We are protectors of the family. Providers, protectors. Let me tell you, every woman wants a man that can provide. Every woman want a man that can protect because women, one of their priorities is a man that can protect them. Security. Security. Sacrifice. You cannot be selfish. You cannot be self-centered. You know, I have come to realize that by experiential knowledge, that oftentimes, when we men, we are pursuing a woman that we love, do you know we sacrifice everything? Everything. We sacrifice everything. We will sacrifice our money, our time, our emotions, everything to get that woman that we love. But oftentimes, immediately we get the woman, that sacrifice disappears. And when that sacrifice disappears, I want you to understand that the affection that you want, you won't get it. The submission that you want, you won't get it. And the reason is because the woman no longer feel that you love her. She no longer feel that you can protect her. She no longer feel secure. Because your pursuance has reduced drastically. And women like to be pursued. Women like to be pursued. And so the way you were pursuing to get her 
after you have gotten here, you must put in the same effort, the same energy. If you are going to keep her in the marriage and in the relationship. Yes, sir. And so, if you were giving flowers, continue to give the flowers. If you were saying, I love you, continue to say, I love you. If you were saying before that you are pretty, you are beautiful. You have to continue to say, you are pretty, you are beautiful. But oftentimes, after we have gotten what we wanted... It is like a complete, I didn't say it. It's like, where is the man that I married? And anytime the woman begins to ask, where is the man that I married? Right there, you have to understand that problem is arising. Challenges is arising. Storm is coming up. Because the woman shouldn't be saying, where is the man that I married? And the reason why the woman is saying, where is the man that I married? Because you are complete opposite of the woman, of the man that was pursuing her. Complete opposite. And guess what? The man that she fell in love with was the man that appreciates her, values her, adores her, says nice things to her, cherishes and nourishes her. Suddenly, all that is missing. You are in the commanding mood. Doris! I'm here. <laughs> yes, a lot of men do that because we think that to show leadership and headship, we have to be commanding. No, you are not supposed to be commanding. Just play your role as the leader. As the husband and as the headship of the family, the respect will automatically come to you. You don't need to be commanding. So oftentimes, because the men have lost their leadership and their headship, they want to exert their authority and they exert by their authority by commanding. We are not going. Period. We are not moving anywhere. We are staying here. Final. You see, when you do that, automatically, what you are doing, you are going to get it from your wife. Because like I said earlier on, she is a reflection of you. Your input determines your output. And so, when she start being rebellious, when she start being cocky, when she start being arrogant, and when she start being defiance, it's not her. It is you. It is you. So, these are some of the challenges that we have in our relationship, and men are not realizing it. You see, when you see all kinds of chaos in our society, when you see all kinds of rebelliousness and disobedience and all kinds of destructiveness in our society, it is because of the absence of righteous males. Absence of righteous males. That is the reason why we see all kinds of chaos. That is why we see all kinds of de destruction and rebelliousness in our society and in our community because there are no leaders, male leaders, that are righteous. And we men, we have to understand that. Christ loved the church. That Christ sacrificed himself. We must learn how to sacrifice for the family. 
sacrifice for the family. Oftentimes, the only time we try to sacrifice, and it is because of our selfish ambition, it is because of what we want. What do we want? Sex. So, in the morning, the woman said, help me. I am tired. I need rest. Then get into the evening, all of a sudden you are washing plates that they have not asked you to wash. <laughs> and in fact, the plate you are washing is already washed. <laughs> it doesn't need any washing. <laughs> you realize also that the house is pristine, it's clean. All of a sudden, you are going to your wife and asking your wife, what can I do? You can't do anything because everything has been done. The only reason why we do all these things is because we want something. That is why sometimes the women begin to, 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 to complain. And what do they complain? Am I your sex toy? Am I your sex toy? The only time you do something for the family is when you want sex. When you do that, you are not a leader. You are not a leader. And as a leader, you must play that leadership role that God has put us. Because you see, men, whatever you are doing, your children are watching. They are watching. You know, when my dad passed away, my twin sisters, the older one, said to me, I will not marry any man who is not like daddy. You know, at the moment, we were all grieving, and so I really didn't think about it. But later on, I thought about it. And the reason why she told me, I don't want to marry any man that is not like daddy because we saw a man that played a leadership role. A man that protected, a man that provided, a man that, that, that brought security to the family, a man that was there, not absent. A man that sacrificed everything for us everything and when i say everything everything for us i remember my dad would say that you guys you will go to school in fact if i have to sell my underwear for you guys to go to school i will sell it for you guys to go to school i am talking about sacrifice you see that is how christ gave himself for the church and the bible is admonishing us men that we should give ourselves to our wives like christ gave himself for the church sacrifice and say so i understood why she told me i will not marry any man that is not like that So, whatever we are doing, the children are watching. And when they grow up, they become the reflection of us. Why? Because that is what they saw. That is what they experienced. That was the environment that they lived in. Abusive environment. Careless free environments. Men, let's rise up as the head of the family, leading our family in righteousness, giving direction to our family. Because you, the man, if you don't have a mission, what is the woman submitting to? If you don't have a mission, what is the woman submitting to? The Bible says submission. The woman must come under your mission. And if you don't have a mission, what is the woman submitting to? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
That is why women don't marry somebody because the person is cute. The person has swag. The person dresses good. The person's phonetics is good. The person has a stable job. All that is good. But if the person is not a righteous man, your relationship will be ruined. Your marriage will be ruined. The ideal marriage that you desire and wanted, you will not get it. It will be chaotic. It will be painful. You see, the other day I was telling somebody that, you see, when you marry somebody that has the fear of God in him and the person is going wayward you trust and you believe God that because the person has the fear of God and the person knows God the Holy Spirit will minister to the person will convict the person and the person will turn around but where the person has no Christ where the person has no relationship with God, there is nothing that convicts that person. Which means that the problem that has started, it will continue until it escalates. And so, don't just look at these things. Look at the man, if the man fears God. And don't also say, I am going to change the man because you can't. You can't. Oftentimes, it's the opposite you cannot a righteous man a man that fears God if you are dating whatever you are seeing in the character in the attitude in the behavior of the man don't ever think that when you get married there is going to be a change it's going to be worse And so, during that time, you must make a decision. If I want to stay with this character the rest of my life, right. or not. Oftentimes, we overlook some of these things. And at the end, it becomes a precarious situations and circumstances in our lives, which is avoidable. If the man is always giving one excuse after the other, why he is not taking responsibility? Just know you are not marrying a leader. You are marrying a wimp. And you know, the way women are created, if you the man, you don't play your role as a man, they will automatically assume that headship automatically because that is women automatically they become the head why do you think that the bible never talked about women loving their husband because women has no problem loving they can love but the reason why the bible talked to them about submission is because women always want to assume the headship if you are not a firm leader a righteous leader by the time you realize that your wife your spouse is telling you go come sit up <laughs> yes that is what is going to happen that is why you as a woman you cannot marry somebody can that cannot lead you that cannot give you direction you cannot marry somebody who has no purpose who has no mission you can't because you will not be able to handle that person and that is why oftentimes you hear women saying that i have four kids but actually five my husband included and the reason why you hear women say that my children are five, even though in actuality and reality they have four children, is because the man is not playing the role as a husband. And she has assumed that position, managing the house, providing for the house, protecting the family, bringing security to the family. That is not the woman's responsibility. That is the responsibility of the man. When you sit down and all you are looking for, honey, have you cook? <laughs> is there food? Where is my lunch? Where is my breakfast? Where is my dinner? And that is all you are about. Food, yeah. <laughs> you are a 
gluten. That is not what the women who want to be married, that is not the kind of men that they are looking for. And women, open your eyes. Who you marry. Because you see, I've said this story before, but I will share it again. There was a barber shop. There is this barber that cuts my hair. And the reason why I stopped going there. One day, I went to the barber shop. The guy was cutting my hair. And usually when I go, I just sit down quietly, cut my hair, let me get out of here. You know, that is my attitude. So, and at barber shop, a lot of conversation <laughs> goes on over there. So, he was cutting my hair. And this guy also was there, and the guy was talking about the wife and the plans that they have for the weekend and other stuff. And then the guy was asking my barber that, hey, you, when are you going to get married? And then he, re he responded this way. He first giggled and then responded this way. Me, I want to marry economically, and I have not met Oprah Winfrey yet. <laughs> Do you know what that means? You don't understand. What it means is this. I want to marry somebody who will take care, not me taking care of the person, which is the manly rule. I want to marry economically. And I was astonished that a pastor friend of mine also was telling me the same thing. He said, hey, Prophet Grammy, I want to marry economically. That's why I'm not still married. I'm watching. You see, somebody like that, a man like that, with that kind of mentality, cannot be a leader. You can't. Because you are coming into the relationship and the marriage for the woman to provide for you. Listen, it is good if once in a while the, your woman provides. But let me tell you, I hate it with passion. With everything that is within me, if my wife is providing for the family. Everything within me. And that is how every man is supposed to be. Because you are the provider. You should be provided. Not the woman. It doesn't matter how much the woman is making. Play your role as a husband. Play your role as a husband. Don't lose your dignity and your respect. Don't lose it. Because by doing that, you lose it. You lose it. I don't like my wife giving me money. Why should she give me money? I'm supposed to be giving her the money. And when I take care of my wife, I feel good. I feel good. Why do I feel good? I feel good because I am playing my role as a husband to her by providing for her. But where I want her to provide for me, there is a problem. It means that the respect I wanted, I can't. The honor I wanted, I can't. The dignity I wanted, I can't. Why? Because I am not playing my role as a leader in the relationship and in the family. That is why today, when you see men who want to marry ATM machines, you have to be careful women. Because there are so many men out there that they are not really in love with you. They are in love with what you can offer and what they can get from you and with what you can give them. And so in the absence of that, guess what? The marriage will start coming down. It will crash. It will crash. Men, we are providers. We are protectors. That is our role. That is our responsibility. Take care of the family. Provide for the family. If the woman decides... 
to help, she can help. But don't sit there and say, I am paying $15 an hour. You too, you are paying $15 an hour. I am working 12 hours. You are working 12 hours. Bring your money. I bring my money. 50-50. Yes, 50-50. Bring your money. I bring my money. You see, society and modernization is trying to metamorphose the institution of marriage. As the man, I don't care if you are being paid higher than me. I want to be the man. I want to take care of the family. I want to provide for the family. I want to bring protection and security to the family. Because that is my role. And when I do that, it makes me feel big. It makes me feel good. When I don't have money, I don't take my wife out. You know the reason why? Because I don't want to take her out where she picks something and she have to pay for it. I don't like that. Mm. She would. I don't like that. So I won't go. <laughs> that kind of embarrassment and shame, I don't like it. You see, she will not tell me anything. She will not say that, oh, honey, uh, don't worry about it. But because I feel that my rule has been taken by my wife. It embarrasses me. It brings me shame. I don't like that. I will not take my children out with my wife when I don't have money and they want to go somewhere or buy something and then my wife is going to pay. It's not going to happen. We will stay home. <laughs> now, having said all that, it doesn't also mean that the woman if she is in her position to help, cannot help. You can help. You can support. You can encourage your husband. But what I'm telling the men is that let it not be the vision that you just want to take away from your wife. Yes. You want your wife to be providing when you are supposed to be providing. Yes. Play your role. If she wants to help, allow her to help. If she wants to support, allow her to support. And you women also, I am sorry I have to bring this in. I am sorry. Don't go and quote me and be telling you, you heard what Pastor Grant said. <laughs> Let me keep my money. Let me keep my money. Let me keep my money. You heard what Pastor Grant said. Have you listened to the tape? Did you hear the teaching? Did you hear the preaching? No, that is not what I'm preaching. Because I know that some of you, the, some of you women here, you cannot wait for the service to be over to get the CD and give it to your husband. So this message will bless you. Listen to it. It will, it will empower you. That is not what I'm saying here. If you can help, help. If you can support, support. As a virtuous woman. But men, be the provider. Be the provider. Be the protector. Be the provider and the protector. It is extremely important. Because that is our role as men. Sacrificing. Sacrificing. Giving ourselves to the family. Giving ourselves to our wives. That is our role. That is our responsibility. That is what Christ did for the church and continue to do for the church. We must continue to play that role and we must continue to do that for our spouse and for our wives and for our family. If you want to enjoy your family and want to enjoy your wife, be a righteous leader. Be a husband. Be responsible. 
you will enjoy your relationship you will enjoy your marriage you will enjoy your family don't forget she is the reflection of you you are getting what you put in you are getting what you put in you know uh, uh, there is this there is this epidemic in Africa. I don't know about the Caribbean, and I know that it's not here, but in the African culture, it's, 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 there, it's, it's, it's rampant. It's a problem, especially for archaic and primitive and antiquated minds. A man wants a male child. And the woman gives birth to a female. And then the man begins to accuse the woman. Why are you giving me female child or female children? And then the family sometimes begins to harass the woman. Why are you not giving me male children? But you have forgotten that what you put in... <laughs> What you put in, that is what you got. If you want male children, deposit male children. Your input determines your output. Men, if you want the woman to submit, be a husband. Be a husband. Don't just be a man. Be a husband. Today in our society, and especially in our country and in our nation, most of the women have assumed the headship. The women are taking care of the children. They are providing leadership for the family, providing security for the family. That is why there are so many young men that are growing up and they don't know how to be a man. Because the husbands are absent. Or they are there, but they are not husbands. They are just, they are just there occupying space. That is why we have so many of our children, male children, in prison, in jail. Drug addicts. No sense of direction. Because they never saw that. No wonder we have so many of our male children suddenly they, they, they realize or they think that they are women trapped in a male body. Why? Because they, their fathers wasn't there. Wasn't there. They were raised by their mothers. And so it was only feminine side that they have seen all their lives. And they feel that I am supposed to be like my mother. Why am I like this? You see, some of the things that we attribute to satanic witchcraft and other things, it is not satanic. It is not witchcraft. It is because of lack of responsibility as women playing our role as husbands. It's not witchcraft. You are not being manipulated. It's not about fasting and praying. It's not about killing. Die, die. Anybody that is making my son, die, die, die. die. They are not dying. <laughs> Have you realized they are not dying? The more you say die, 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 the more they are living and the more they are expanding and their coast is enlarging. Because it has got nothing to do with them. You must examine yourself and do the right thing and you will get the right results. Simple. 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 We are the head of the family. Let's play that role. Let's play that role. And I want to conclude by saying this lady if you are in a relationship and the man 
cannot give you a gift. Rethink the relationship. If the man cannot give you a gift, rethink that relationship. It will not work. Because when it comes to love and affection, it's about give and take. If the man cannot give you whilst you are dating, then if you marry, if you marry, you will cry, you will weep. Painful pain. Somebody shout pain. Agony. 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 If the man has not one time said, Oh honey, I went to tell. I saw this dress. I saw that. It was so beautiful. And I thought that it would look good on you. And I bought it for you. If you have never experienced that, let me tell you, I don't care how cute the man is. I don't care how many degrees the man has. I don't care the stable job that he has. Let me tell you, that relationship will never ever work. You are in the wrong relationship. It is going to cost you your destiny and your life and your future get out get out get out get out get out. I know that you women you are moved by what you hear men are moved by what they see forget about the sweet talks forget about forget about all the sweet talks forget about all the lyrics for, forget it. Because when you marry, that's not what you are going to eat. Do you think you are going to eat? You are the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Are you going to eat that? That doesn't put food on the table. If the man cannot give you a gift, get out. In other words, stingy men are not qualified to be husbands. Rise on your feet. Please, women, did I dealt with the issue? Don't write me. Don't send me email. Don't talk to me. This message ends today. Somebody say it ends today. Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770-941-1934 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.